to stop and get a battery. I thought we were still downloading. I'll call this special uh, workshop to order. Uh, Council, you have a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's workshop in front of you, and I'd entertain a motion now to adopt. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Woodruff, to bring us into this session of the budget. Mayor, members of council, thank you again for your continued work on the budget. Uh, this evening, we're going to have a, a little different format relative to the workshop. We're asking because of the fact that we're very close to needing to uh, adopt a budget, that you have a workshop now until about 6.30, 20 till 7, then adjourn or take a break until your uh, regular council meeting is over, which begins at 7, and possibly come back here at 8 or 8.15 for the remainder of the workshop, if that's at all possible. However, we'll let you be the judge of that. We just wanted to let the public know that at the beginning, since most of the time your workshops are concluded before the uh, City Council regular session. As we continue our budget deliberations this <coughs> evening, we would certainly remind the public that you have been working on a regular basis since April the 22nd. You've been through department reviews, you've been through all of the various funds. We've looked at funding options last week. And as we come tonight, it's really to the point where we are hoping that we can get direction from you so that we might be able to adopt the budget, if you're ready, on June the 3rd. Of course, if you're not, we'll adopt it when you are. The next meeting after June the 3rd would be June the 17th. At your last meeting, we talked about funding options, and we showed you that generally the goal we're after, it may not be your goal, but the general goal we're trying to find a solution for is roughly $6.2 million. That's the general shortfall. And that shortfall would be the base budget, department issues, and a wage increase if you so choose to pass that along. We looked at the funding sources, and for us, the funding sources are just pretty general. Our main funding source is the tax system, property tax, fee schedules, and the fund balance. And we know that from the previous discussions that our current tax rate is 53.8. We have worked with Harry Smith, the property appraiser, to come up with what we believe is our best estimate now of our tax base. And where we were originally projecting a roughly 3.2 cent increase to revenue neutral, we're now able to tell you that's roughly 3.6. So instead of being a 57 number, we're looking at a number a little higher. We know that last year we were able to produce about $365,000 for every penny, but after reval, it's $350. And we also know that for every $5 sanitation fee is added, if you so choose, that would generate about $675,000. And then, of course, the other is what are we going to do with fund balance spending? This was put in the presentation yesterday, and it talks about one of the many challenges which we face in funding city government, not just this budget, but every year. And that is the fact that our privilege license, which is a funding source for the city that generally produces $750,000 a year, uh, there is a proposal in the State House that that be eliminated or significantly restructured. We are uh, able to tell you, uh, you'll notice I left the word pleased out, we're able to tell you that the House did pass their proposed change to privilege license earlier today. That does not mean it's legislation. It must still be passed by the Senate. If there are changes, then there must be a compromise worked out. Their package says that you will cap privilege license at $100 and that you can have a schedule of fees up to $100 or you can set $100. Your current fee schedule is a schedule. It's not a number. It is a schedule. So at $100, you will have uh, quite a number of your city businesses that will pay substantially less, 25, 35, 50, whatever it may be. What we do know, though, is because of that scale, and if the Senate adopts it exactly as the House has adopted it, you will, we as a city government, will lose $600,000 in revenue. We had initially told you that we would lose 400000 but that was with the assumption that it would be a $100 fee, not a scale up to $100. Unfortunately for us, uh, the Senate 
uh, I'm sorry, the House has adopted this this afternoon, and we will have to address this. Our understanding is that this will go into effect one year away. So the revenue that we would have collected or proposed to collect for FY15, the budget you're currently negotiating, we are still assuming $750,000. However, until we get the final adopted law, you don't know when this will go into effect or what the final numbers are. This is not something that is built into your budget. It is not something that's built into your recommendations. I'm sorry, the, the revenue is built into your budget. The loss of that revenue is not. You will recall that last week we gave a series of options that included addressing your fund balance needs by simply going to your savings account. And we showed the pros and cons of that. We also showed the impact on option two relative to going to the revenue neutral rate and going also with fund balance and we discussed the pros and cons of that. We also looked at revenue neutral, a fund balance and simply tax increase. And certainly uh, none of you were uh, standing in line for a 10.2 cent tax increase in order to balance the overall budget. The fourth option was a combination of revenue neutral, which would take your, your base tax rate from 53 point up, I'm sorry, 53.8 up to 57.4, and that would generate roughly $1.1 million. We discussed spending 1.5 out of your fund balance. If you did that, you're looking at an 8.3 cent tax increase above revenue neutral, and you're looking at a $5 sanitation fee increase. From our discussion last week, there was some, not consensus, I would just simply say some general discussion that if you took revenue neutral up and if you used fund balance for $2 million instead of $1.5 million, you would be looking at a shortfall then of roughly $3 million. And we discussed with you what are our options for doing that. If you were to increase the sanitation fee by $5, that's generally the equivalent of two cents of tax. And if you did that, you would come up with 675,000, and then that would leave a shortfall of 6.8 cents for a tax increase. And if you did that, then you would in fact have a balanced budget. So the dialogue this evening, which we will hope to hopefully uh, try to focus on, is how do you want to balance the budget? Now let me give you some background information. You know better than anyone else that the city government is where, where government service is actually provided. We know that the military is provided by the federal government. We know there's a lot of other services provided. But when it comes to what the citizen, the taxpayer gets, there is no level of government that gives more services every day than you and you give those through your 564 employees. I mean, police don't just, you know, people don't just turn themselves in after they've uh, robbed a bank. The police have to go out there. People don't just, you know, heal themselves or put themselves in an ambulance or cut themselves out of a car. The fire and police department does that. Grass doesn't just get mowed, people do it. We're very blessed to have quality employees. When you look back we also showed you that prior to revaluation how did your residential properties divide up in fifty thousand dollar increments and you've seen this before and you will notice that the vast majority of the residents in jacksonville live in homes that are assessed at less than two hundred thousand and most less than one hundred and fifty thousand we know that with the residential tax change you can see that there, uh, the average percent change by category. If you were in the 50 to 100,000 category, it went down by less than 3%. If you were in the 150 and above category, you can see that the valuations of your property went down substantially. Now that's not true of every one, but in general, if you were in the 150 to 200,000 category, and part of the 2,481 uh, two, two, 2, parcels, generally they went down roughly 15% in value. What does that actually mean though when it comes to taxes paid? Because this is like you know, buying a brand new Ford truck. It isn't about the sticker price, it isn't about the invoice, it's really about what's your monthly bill. 
The average home value in Jacksonville in 2013, according to the tax office, was 162,000 and change. In 2014, after revaluation, it dropped $20,000, the average home. If you take the average home and you look at the taxes paid before revaluation, you will see that before revaluation, the average home was at 162,000. They would have paid $876 to the city. At revenue neutral, they will pay $817. That's a 60, roughly $59 drop in their taxes. That's at revenue neutral. If you do go to the rate that we're going to be discussing tonight, which is 64.2 cents, it would be an increase. It would go from $876 up to $914. That's $38 increase, roughly $3 a month. For a home, and these are real numbers, and we did not pick the parcels, we asked Harry to pick them. A home of 118,000 today was valued at 133,000, did pay $716. Revenue neutral, they'll pay 681. At a 64.2 cent, their tax bill will go up to $762. 109 parcel was at 120,000. You can see what they did pay, what revenue neutral was, and you can also see that their tax bill went up $57 if you went to the full rate. Went up what? It would go up $57 if you went to the full rate that we're discussing. On the other hand, what we find is that the homes that are a little more in value, here's a home that was at 268. It's now valued at 212000 Their taxes were $1,442. The tax neutral rate is $1,218. And at $64,2, you're going to be at $1,362. Now, what this tells you is everybody in the city, commercial property, residential property, every property is going to be impacted differently by whatever tax rate you give. You can see that the lower value homes, they're actually going to have their tax bills go up. The higher priced homes are actually going to have their tax bills go down. And that's going to be true of any rate that you take. The other thing that we would remind you is that because the sales tax distribution formula is based upon, among other things, your tax rate, we have to protect ourselves from losing $850,000 more dollars, and no one is suggesting that, that that in and of itself is a justification for raising taxes. But if you stayed at 53.8, our calculations show that a year away, you would lose another $850,000 in sales tax. That's over two, almost three cents of property tax. Where we are today is, to a very large degree, a bed that we have not made, but we are required to fix. We had a change in sales tax distribution. We've expired grants. We have the second debt payment coming up on the Center for Public Safety. We have revaluation. We have privilege license changes. I mean, all of these are impacts that, of those, there are two that you made decisions on. We as a government felt it was in the taxpayer's best interest to go with grants to increase your police and fire. But we knew at the time we accepted those grants that we would have to put those personnel on full time. Likewise, we made the decision to build the Center for Public Safety. And when that was made, you raised taxes 3.84 cents. 3.68? 3.84 cents. Thank you. And we knew that at a point you would need to raise taxes again. We were fortunate we were able to delay that a number of years. With all this said, let me give you some recommendations to think about. Nobody likes tax increases. You don't like them, the taxpayer doesn't like them, the staff doesn't like them. Whatever we do, let's fix the budget so we're not sitting at this table next year 
discussing the same thing. You know, the, uh, the pain is going to be there and we might as well address it if we possibly can with a rate where at least for two years and hopefully three or four years, we will not be back in front of the taxpayers saying, give us more, give us more, give us more. The second thing that we would ask you to do is agree on the revenue neutral rate of 57.4. Now, you have seen the examples. Literally everyone at revenue neutral went down in their taxes, other than commercial, but all the residential. We're a little worried about $2 million from the general fund, but we can agree with that. Uh, we had several of you send me notes suggesting could we cut out some of the cushion that's in the budget. And I will tell you, every budget, this one or anybody else's budget, there's money you can cut out. That cushion, though, the slimmer you make that cushion, the slimmer your recurring fund balance rollover is. Now, one of the benefits, and, and I will be the first to stand up for the staff, but I believe you'll agree with me, they do not spend every penny that you give them. This is not like, uh, you know, some governments uh, that won't be, you know, named like the federal government. We don't want to name them. But we understand just because you give us a budget doesn't mean we have the authority to spend every <coughs> penny of it. And every year we try to return to the fund balance at the end of the year revenue. And we did that in 14. We expect to do in 13. We expect to do that again in 14. The skinnier the cushion, though, the less the rollover, because it is that rollover. I mean, for example, we could help balance the budget by cutting $100,000 out of fuel today. I don't think that's wise, because in, none of us know what the price of fuel is going to be. We do know that last year we had the same figures in the budget for fuel, and because we were conservative in our use, and the price did not get extravagant, we were able to return $100,000 to the general fund. But one thing you could do is you could cut that now. The problem with that is, is that really a good idea? Because who knows what's going to happen with gas prices. More and more of us should be like uh, our very good friend who drives an electric car where uh, we don't have to worry about the price of gas at the pump although we may only drive at 55 miles an hour, as long as we're not through a school zone, we'll be okay. Sanitation fee. It's not pleasant, but I am recommending to you that in order to hold down a tax increase, that you consider raising the sanitation fee $5. That will offset the need of two cents of property tax. I'm also recommending to you that above the tax neutral rate, that you increase taxes 6.8 cents to a tax rate of 64.2. I know that's going to be difficult. In that, we would hope that you could support department issues. Two primary ones are the breathing apparatus for the fire department at 50,000 and then landscaping and mowing improvements at 100,000. Compensation, we are recommending to you, but at the end of the day, you will have the final say on wage adjustments for city employees. And we would hope that tonight, whatever number you pick, that you would pick a number and you would go back and direct the staff, direct the manager, balance this budget within this particular number. Now, if that number is 64.2, if it's 64.1, if it's some number south of that, what we're asking tonight, if possible, give us a number that you're comfortable with we will then go back into the budget and make the necessary adjustments as you so direct. Now, with that, Mr. Mayor, if I can get the slide to go back one, that's our recommendations to you. We're open for direction, please, from you and the council. Who wants to jump out there first? Chris, I got a question. Are we looking at uh, water and sewer rate increases? You are looking at water and sewer rate increases, and we'll be discussing those either uh, right after this or right after the council meeting. And you definitely are looking at water and sewer rate increases. And one of the reasons why, and since you brought it up, we will begin that discussion. You do have $17 million in the savings account. 
The problem is we have bond debt. And the bond covenants and the bond conditions state this. Your operating expenses every year must be fully met by recurring revenue. Now, to hold down the recurring revenue, because debt is a recurring revenue, you authorized one meeting ago, I believe it was one meeting ago, the prepayment of almost $13 million of debt out of your reserve. But again, you are facing a rate increase. We did take that to the Water and Sewer uh, Advisory Board this past week. They gave us some recommendations. Uh, Wally Hansen and Gail and the staff will be discussing that. Mr. Thomas was your representative there, and I'm sure he'll be giving a report on that too. But yes, sir, you are looking at, uh, I think the only good news in this budget this year is we're not asking for stormwater fee increases. Can we adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so this is a record this is what's been recommended by our manager and staff as far as how to approach the problem uh, that we're facing with this shortfall of roughly 6.2 million dollars yes and mayor i will say to you that the the difficulty with this recommendation is it does not solve the six hundred thousand dollar dilemma you're going to have if the senate concurs in the house in changing the um uh, privilege license. So th this isn't really a two-year solution? Then. This would not be a two-year solution, but what we would pledge to you is this. As I said in a, in a uh, previous correspondence with y'all, you know, as your manager, what I'm prepared to do is to go in and freeze positions, to analyze every vacancy, whether it's police, whether it's secretary, whether it's a building person, look at every one of them and determine ways that we can cut the staff. Well, I think that needs to be done anyway, regardless. I mean, I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Would you? I mean, well, at least, yeah, at least do, right. a, do, a, do a needs assessment. I mean, you know, assess the need for those positions. And I think you've done a really good job of that up to now anyway. I mean, we, y'all have done a lot to trim a lot of, uh, a lot of the organizational, you know, as it is, you know, with the combination of the two positions there in the public safety and then the, uh, you know some of the other changes in positions i mean it's freed up all it's, it's saved the city the taxpayers a lot of money and we get i, I commend you on that well i, I appreciate well, that whatever he does after this budget is adopted will help increase the fund balance for the following year the overall budget i think shows good work upon the staff and the manager to keep increases done as much as possible. In fact, what what is the overall effect on this general fund budget compared to last year? Well, it's actually a reduction of right. a little over a million dollars. Million dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great in these, these kind of times that we were able to do that, but we had no choice. If we do any more, I think we're going to be cutting into services. Can you? In looking at that and looking at the 47.2 versus the 46, the major differences are in planning and transportation, fire and traffic signal control, uh, short of a few dollars. Can you just give us a summary on that, that reduction and what that actually is? Because when I was looking at it, and, and you know, I would agree, I think we've got a great manager, I think we've got a great staff, I think we've got excellent departments. But in looking at the departmentals, you know, really how much trimming was done? Well, let me uh, address that this way. The majority of the reduction from 47.2 to 46 did occur in several areas. Number one, it occurred in your, in your uh, intelligent transportation system area because you'll recall that we had to fund four positions as our commitment for the DOT investing millions of dollars in a new system. We also had to purchase capital. This year's budget has a reduction because you're not buying as much capital for ITS, Intelligent Transportation System. So a one-time expense. It's a one-time expense. The other good news in this year's budget is, remember, whereas last year we had to fully fund it, now, once the system becomes operational, we will be able to invoice the DOT and actually get revenue back. 
Now we're only going to be able to cover about 35% of the expense of that, but at least that's not 100% funding. And likewise, the other significant change was the fact that we purchased a fire truck last year that put us on debt service. Uh, that debt service continues this year, but you had to set aside that money. Uh, what we can do is, as a budget note, we will try to get you more detail. Uh, it is certainly a correct statement, though, that we did not go in and, and find major changes in, in budgets. We just, it just simply wasn't there. And that isn't criticism. I'm just making an observation and looking at, you know, the things that you showed us today, you know, the reevaluation, the loss of sales tax, which is significant, and obviously the, um, the uh, business license tax that, that we're getting ready to lose. Uh, you know, we're looking at all these things that have taken place and then when you compare that to, you know, what are we doing internally with these conflicts, um, and you brought back a reduced budget, I'm just in rationalizing, you know, what internally have we brought forward that would be less of a budget. You know, that's, that's something that I would be interested in. Well, as part, of the, as part of the three E's, we did things such as analyze our copying, analyzed our cell phones, we merged a lot of... Uh, of those programs where we are saving, you know, fives and ten thousands of dollars, you're you're not going to find in any budget where we were able to save a hundred thousand dollars by doing something differently. But for we me, I think that's important, though. I yes, mean, sir. you know, you save ten thousand dollars. That shows, I think, genuine uh, interest in saving dollars that can be saved if. In, especially in tight times because you know private business or even you know families uh, elderly families you know when if we raise taxes they've got to figure out okay now how do we pay this extra fifty dollars or eighty dollars and now the water and sewer went up another thirty dollars okay what do we got to do to get this money to, to pay for that so I think you know while that may seem small it's not because it shows a genuine effort to look within your line items which we don't normally do and, and shouldn't have to do it shows genuine interest that we're looking for ways to to maximize our expense or to maximize our profit through the reduction of expenses well, you know one of the other things which you'll recall we did in parks and recreation was we made the after school and before school programs totally self-funded I mean, that alone saved almost $50,000. Now, it was over a two-year period it was safe. But we will be happy to provide you with uh, well, you know, items of that nature. Let me just say one other thing. You know, you guys have done a great job. If you look at what you did with the police and fire, you know, that was an, an excellent move, and it benefited the taxpayers. Uh, and, and you've done that in many different areas. I mean, so uh, it's just that revenues are continuing to be less and less and less and that makes it more difficult but you guys have done a great job in a lot of the areas of consolidating and, and restructuring and and saving money while not really deteriorating in, in services yes you know? but you got to remember too uh, the, o the other part of that is we've been losing revenues absolutely uh, quite a bit over close to what four million dollars over the last uh, few years with the oh, loss least. of the base, with the, you know, with the businesses on base. We lost money on the sales tax, it was about it was a million off base, uh, two and a half million dollars on the sales yeah. tax. Yeah. We're about to lose $600,000 on the uh, uh, privilege license tax. Our fees are going down, or, uh, you know, the total number of uh, fees and inspection fees that we get are going down because the building's going down. So mm -hmm. really, you know, uh, great job. Yeah, in spite of all that, I think we've done well, but the fact of the matter still is there's just not the same amount of money coming in. And we and understand we still, that. And, and to provide this same, that level of service that our citizens have become accustomed to, uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to patch this hole somehow. And uh, unfortunately, you know, again, like I said, a lot of this was due to uh, things that we did not create. And uh, but we still have to fix it. It's either that or cut the services. And I, I, I really think that would be a hard debate with our citizens as to whether or not they'd actually want to see service cut. 
or reduced. We will. mentioned cutting services. I had to, to think about. I don't. I know we're adding a lot of money. I think in the parks and recreation for highway landscaping maintenance, plus what we're picking up on the bypass and so forth, right? And yes, sir. What we're doing with the Beirut Gardens, and I'm a little heartburn over that. But yet at the same time, I got off on off the parkway at exit 10, going toward the hospital. You look at that median strip, and the weeds are knee high, if not higher than that. And I says, that is ugly. You know, is that what we want our city to look like? So I may have heartburn in one respect in terms of the extra money we have to spend, but at the same time, uh, I'd rather have a nicer looking community too. It's choices. You got to make choices. I mean, there's things that we can look at on, in that respect too. Every week or every two weeks versus every week or, yeah. you know, you know, especially if we're going to take on additional responsibility, you know, as far as taking care of the uh, medians and all, it might be we want to do it every 10 days or whatever, you know, it, it, I think uh, over time that it would equate to a little bit of money, am I wrong thinking that way? No, and, and that what you have to do is figure out how do you stretch the money you have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Michael and I have already been talking about uh, the areas that we're going to, uh, in my opinion, we should address because the DOT is now finished with their construction projects. You know, it's one thing for the bypass not to be mowed but once every two or three months. But when you're in the downtown area, which obviously 17 and the hospital and all of that area is downtown, uh, you know, it, it's hard to see your um, your medians in your high traffic areas uh, look like that. Well, I agree. But what we'll do, whatever money you give us, we will stretch it so that it keeps the city looking at the very best it possibly can. I'm not so sure that <clears throat> along a bypass that people don't expect higher grass, but what they don't expect is a bunch of trash. Yeah. And I know we go through and pick trash up prior to cutting the grass. Um, I don't know that's a big savings over you know, just picking up trash, but certainly I would expect the trash to be picked up. Well, and also, you know, those arteries come up to the hearts of our city, so we're other areas. <coughs> probably a lot of the bypasses are on the outskirts where you can let it grow and it and it's not as visible, you know, like how do you not keep Western <coughs> Boulevard mode, you know, in front of your big retail areas? But I think that looking at maybe alternating, like what you're mentioning, every every three weeks, ten days, say maybe or every we don't, other. Yeah, maybe we don't mow it every week or every two weeks, but maybe we mow it a lot more often than, than, than quarterly. Yeah. Well, like I said, whatever money you give us, we're going to do the best that we can to make your city look, our city look, as beautiful as it possibly can. I would I would like to talk about the water and sewer rate increase because that's going to influence really my 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 decision and uh, in trying to minimize the impact to the citizens and if we're looking at a water sewer increase I'd like that before we we really sit down and make a hard decisions and we're vote on the budget. Prepared to discuss prepared that. To do that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wally, if you'll come up, please. <clears throat> You know, one of the areas that you were talking while Wally is coming up, one of the areas that you were talking about uh, how the city is uh, cutting back, uh, Wally was the assistant uh, director of that department. When he became the department director, we froze that position. We do not have any intentions of filling that position. Now, yes, it is in your budget as a budgeted position, but the money is frozen. That means that we do not intend to fill that position unless we come back to you and provide justification. But again, let's talk about water and sewer because I certainly agree with you. You need to look at the full package. So, Mr. Hanson? Actually, I'm going to let Gail start. She's the brains of this operation. We're going to go with beauty and intelligence, <laughs> and then right. Wally and I are going to just kill. How about all that? Um, for the water sewer fund, when you take a look at the um, water sewer budget, which in your book is on page 7, I believe, and it's 10 on my iPad, is that right? <coughs> if you want to take a look at that page while we're talking about it. Um, if you'll take a look, the revenue sources are declining and have been declining for the last three or four years. Um, so why is that? Well, a large part of it is the um, facilities fees. 
with the slowdown and the growth, we don't have as many people buying into the into the system. So that's um, dropped considerably. And then the user fees are down a little bit, not a whole, whole bunch, but some. And that seems to be the case <coughs> across the state. We hear that um, consistently from folks across the state that users are using less water. Well, we, we encourage them to. We, yes. we provide water saving um, That's right. kits, don't we? <laughs> Um, also on the water sewer fund, the um, expenses are down a little bit. I, and I think in looking at this page, the two largest decreases are in the engineering department. And that's because in the engineering amended budget, there is that tank maintenance. And that's going to actually roll over and increase the 15 budget. It's an ongoing contract. So that's, that's one of the decreases. And then the other one is in the debt service area. And that's directly related to the $12 million in projects that we just funded with cash rather than borrowing. So that reduced our budget for debt service payments. So what is our expense structure? Because you have to meet your, your revenues have to meet your expenses. You're recurring. Right. Yeah, you're recurring. So what is that number? Well, I'm, I'm going to get to that okay. just a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after we adjusted the fund balance. If you take last year's fund balance, was about $33 million, the un, unassigned net assets or unrestricted net assets. For water and sewer. For water and sewer. And um, that would leave you about $21 million in the fund balance right now to help cover the <coughs> expenses. Um, the budget as presented here uses about $4.3 million in fund balance. Um, but we tried to get that down. We don't want to raise fees unnecessarily. So of that 4.3, part of it can be used to cover capital projects. Um, and then we took what was left, the operating budget, we looked at the budget and we said, well, we don't always spend 100% of what we budget. So we reduced that a little bit and we came up with we need to raise $1.3 million in the fund. And why can't we use the water and sewer fund balance for operational expenses? Well, the bond covenants require that our current revenue cover our current expenses and our debt service. We actually have a very low ratio. We only have to cover our debt service one time. It's, it's kind of common for it to be 1.1 or 1.2, even as much as 1.5 of your debt service. But um, our requirement is only um, one time. Um, and so we need to raise that 1.3 million. If we can't use fund balance, what's left? The water and sewer fund has two primary revenue sources. Um, the first one's the facilities fees. Um, wow, you switched them on me. Um, those fees can only be used to fund growth projects and they're provided by the developer or the builder. That's their buy-in to our system. That fee remained constant from 1994 to 2008, and the current fee structure was implemented over a four-step process, and the last time it was increased was January of 2011. Um, Can I interrupt you just a moment? Yes, sir. Can you clarify something? All right, you're talking about the fund balance not being able to be used for operational expenses. What is that fund balance going to be used for eventually? Is that going to be used for capital project for capital yes. projects? So. For example, uh, as you know, we are proposing expanding the system across the, if I may use the term, across the swamp, where we'll go from Western Boulevard and Gum Branch through <coughs> uh, Williamsburg all the way back out to 258 through Burton so Park and that area. Funding the run of line. Rent on Ramsey would come from? That's correct. From that. And another, you know, part of our proposal is to expand our water and sewer activities out 17 <coughs> towards New Bern so that as commercial growth occurs out there. But let me give you an example of what common sense would say is a capital project, but budgeting doesn't allow you. If you remember, Pete was asking this year for $330,000 for sludge removal. Well, hate to tell you that, it's not a capital project. Why? Because you have to do it on a periodic basis and that becomes a recurring expense. So again, you get 
caught up into governmental accounting and into the bond covenants. But that's another reason why in the budget this year, we agreed with Pete that we need to address the sludge, but we're going to do it by funding 150,000 in this year's budget, in the proposed 15 budget, and 150 in the proposed 16 budget. And that way you spread it over two years and hold down the impact. If we did that project in one year, it would shoot your rate even higher. But by spreading it, you know, we're able to do those things. The same thing with line maintenance. We are required by our permit to go out and cut the trees and keep all of the lines that go all the way out to the land treatment site passable so that if there's a break or you can inspect. Well, to be quite frank with you, we're a little behind on that. But on the other hand, you know, instead of spending $500,000 one year trying to do it all, we're breaking it up into pieces where every year we're going to put in fifty to $75,000 and we're going to clear lines and clear lines and clear lines and then that number becomes basically a static number in your budget each year rather than a spike and valley number. Okay. Please. And then the user fees, if you'll remember back a few years ago, we had several years of um, rather large increases to the water and sewer fees um, prior to the construction of the expansion at the land treatment site and in preparation for the water treatment plant. Um, in FY09, we hired Raftelis to build us a rate model, and in 10, we implemented their um, suggestions from that rate model. And at the time, in FY10, when we implemented their um, recommendations, we did not increase the base fee. But we did make some small changes to the tiers to try to just catch the normal user. And then we had some small increases to the tier rates. Um, and the user fees, as Dr. Woodruff said, are used to fund the operations, the debt service, and rehab type projects that are not capital. Let me give you an example of a rehab project that uh, is not capital in nature. Bordeaux, just three blocks away, you could not use the money created by the facility fees for Bordeaux. Why not? Sure seemed like a capital project. It is in your CIP, but it's not eligible to be funded by your facility fees. That was because it was the replacement of a line on existing customers. On the other hand, facility fees could be used if you were extending a line out 17 to an undeveloped area that's going to be developed. Did I answer your question, Mr. Lazara? Or... No. Move on. I still don't. Yeah, but what what is what is the recurring? Is the recurring? Is a recurring uh, you just you have the total budget to include include capital projects, but we I don't see the recurring. Uh, you said you were going to get to that. I'm I'm assuming you were. Well, we appropriated 4.2, almost 4.3 to balance this budget that's presented to you. And of that 4.3, if you look down at the very last expense line is the transfers. That's the capital projects basically. So 2.6 of that 4.3 is really eligible to be used. And then we looked at the operating budget and we said historically we've spent, you know, l something less than 100%. So we reduced that a little bit. We don't want to over raise the rate and add to the fund balance. So we came up with a number of 1.3 million is the hole that needs to be filled now by the some other revenue source. So of the 26 million that's in the budget, 26.5 million recurring expenses would be what is your estimate 23.5 million 24 million 20 yeah. about 24 okay about 24 million is recurring expense and that includes the debt service which has to be paid by revenue it has yeah. to be paid by, by that's correct more and or the less there are a few things that can right. but generally but generally because it is a recurring annual expense that goes into the operating. And that is one of the reasons why we, we also stress the importance of 
uh, building up as large a fund balance here as possible so you can pay cash for your upgrades. I mean, it, it's just like the uh, system going across uh, the swamp through Burton Park and out to the land. That system's going to cost us 27 to 28 million dollars. So when we when we do that, we're going to come back to you all with a recommendation that a major portion of that be funded with cash and the rest of it be long-term debt. You can't do prepaid debt service? We just did that. No, I'm talking about payment-wise to reduce your 10-9 to 7 um, from fund balance? We looked at that when we did the second revenue bond, mm -hmm. but the interest rates we're paying are so low and the one we have one that's borderline maybe could have saved us a, a little bit it has a prepayment penalty so when you add the penalty it doesn't make sense to pay it off well not necessarily pay it off but and i'm so your debt service for fy 14 15 is 10 10 million 930. you can't prepay several years from fund balance to reduce that number can't do that's that. That's the restriction. That's the restriction. Yeah, that you it has to be come from current revenue, not recurring revenues. Well, because the calculation is actually done on actual payments. Yeah. That would actually throw us over into the not meeting the coverage in the year you paid it. So what's the rate increase? <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> Do I need to skip to the end? <laughs> <laughs> this is the priming. Hurry, hurry that's right. quickly. Um, is it one of the things I wanted to cover while we're talking about expenses is some of the things that we are doing to uh, reduce our expenses is, as Dr. Woodruff mentioned, not filling um, certain positions as they become vacant. We're actually analyzing those. And Dr. Woodruff used uh, the assistant director as an example. Another would be uh, Ray Holder's position, the plant superintendent. That's another that it was a high level management type position and what we did is we actually looked for others in the organization that could handle those responsibilities and assign those responsibilities to those individuals and then we actually filled it with a worker at a much lower level so we took a management position and actually hired a water plant operator at about half the salary um, other things that we're doing, we talked about the um, Parkwood Regional Lift Station out in the Williamsburg uh, Western Boulevard area. Uh, one of the things that we did in the Capital Improvement Plan was to push that out one year so that it corresponds with the debt service that will be retired with, I believe, the expansion it's the of the original the, land treatment. Okay, the original land treatment site. So. Those are things that we're looking at. Some of the challenges that we still face are we have a water plant and as demand increases, it's, you know, it's different from what we were doing five years ago where we were pulling our water supply from the Black Creek Aquifer. At that point, all we did was pump it out of the ground, put some chlorine in it and send it out to our customers. Now we have to pump it out of the ground. We have doubled the size of our well field. We have 20 Castle Hain wells now. We have just under 20 Black Creek wells. So we still have pumping costs. The problem is, as it goes through the treatment process, we lose about 20 or 25 percent as waste. And then we have chemicals that we did not have before. We have ongoing maintenance, filter replacements, filter cleaning. So those are all increasing expenses that we are facing and will continue to face as we move forward. Uh, same on the land treatment site. Um, although the, the, chemical, the, the process didn't change a lot, we added force that we have to manage. We added new sprinklers, additional maintenance, pumping, and electricity costs associated. And of course, we've talked about the electricity tax, rising fuel cost, and uh, several years ago, we brought to you a, a, a improvements that were in the operations budget of utilities maintenance. And we had previously deferred some maintenance and we had some lift stations that were in really bad shape. And we have since spent quite a bit of money 
bringing several of those lift stations um, back into um, not really code compliance, but better operating status um, so that we have less uh, problems at those lift stations and less reoccurring cost. And then, of course, if you remember the beginning of this calendar year back in January, I think we went nine days and had eight main breaks. You know, those are things that we just can't predict. So those are things that we're going to continue to face. Um, our options for generating the $1.3 million, <coughs> million dollars that Gail mentioned, we've essentially come up with four options. And we went to the Water and Sewer Advisory Board. Um, one of their strategies was to look at, in the fourth option, which would be increasing base and tier rates, was to put a cap on the base rate and put the rest into the tiers. So the, the four options are increase your facility fees, which we talked about can only cover growth related projects, increase the base rate or that zero to 2,000 gallons, increase the tier rates, which is above the 2,000 gallons, and that's where we put our increase back in 2010. So the in 2010, the base rate remained constant and we put all of our increase into the tiers. And then a combination of the two. Um, quickly looking at each of those, um, I mentioned that the facilities fee could only be used for growth related projects. I'll add one thing. Um, while it could not be used on Bordeaux Street, it is possible to use it in the replacement of a line if you upsize that line and then it can only be used in the incremental portion that you upsize. So it can be used in the replacement of a line, but only if you upsize that line. So in that case, a portion could be covered with facility charges, but the rest in the user fee. Um, one of the, we ran the facilities fee model and preliminarily, it looks like it could support a minor increase. And when I say minor, on, the, on a single family or residential home, it would be about a half a percent. So right now, it's in the $5,830 range. That would go to $5,860. Um, on a one and a half inch meter, I think that increase is closer to two and a half percent. And I don't remember about three or four hundred dollars but it still doesn't generate a large amount of revenue however as a philosophy the water and sewer advisory board believes that growth should support itself so the the demand that growth puts on having additional capacity and having upsize lines the water and sewer advisory board um, supports always keeping the facility fee current. The problem though with trying to balance a budget with facility fees is you cannot predict growth. That's the, lower, the lower revenue anyway. The remaining options all rely on the user fee, which is the bulk of our revenue source. And just to give you perspectives, the the next three slides kind of give you an idea so you can see the customers that would be affected. So looking by meter size, you can see that about 80% of our customers have a 5 8 meter, I suppose residential and commercial. 15% have a 3 quarter, and then when you get over 1, one inch meter, you only have about 5%. When you look at actual consumption, the 0 to 2,000 is the base rate. About 32, this is residential consumption, I'm sorry, so this is residential customers only. So 32% of our residential customers are in the base rate. The highest portion at 57% is in that first tier, which is just outside of the base rate. So that two to 6,000 gallon range. And then we have 9% in the next tier, which is six to 9,000. And then as you would expect, residential customers above 10,000 gallons is very small, 3% or less. Looking at all customers, so this would be residential apartments, um, businesses, everything. So the consumption by all, cl all classes, uh, again, in the base rate, would have about 33%, so pretty comparative to the last slide. In the first tier, we again, we have the bulk of our customers, 2,000 to, to 6,000 gallons. 
and then from six to ten thousand we have nine percent and then again from ten thousand above uh, gallons per month we have five percent so as we move through the options the we have specific examples so you could see the impacts on bills so this would be an increase to the base rate only and I believe this works out to be about a nine and a half percent increase so you can see that on a nine and a half percent increase the five-eighths customer the uh, base rate would go from 4814 in the blue to a total of 5272 in the green so about four dollars and eighty cent so if all of the 1.3 million dollars was made up in the base rate you can see the impact at a 5 8 meter and then the largest meter is six inch and I believe that one's about 200 and I can't do that math in my head Gail probably could but it's just over all right, 230 dollars so as the meter size gets lar progressively larger the percentage would increase and that would of course balance your shortfall but it would have no <coughs> impact on the rate structure past the base that That's is correct one. so these are this is the same option these are actual examples so the blue is a five inch, inch meter that's in the base rate the, so that 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 first 30 percent give or take the five eighths meter h five eighths inch meter at the six thousand gallon which is that first tier which is 50 to 60 percent is um, in the green and then an actual example of a one and a half inch meter at a restaurant is in the orange and then the yellow is our largest customer so you can see the increase in the base rate is takes the base customer from 48.14 to 52.72 or five dollar 52 dollars and 72 cent and that again is a nine and a half percent now because the base rate is only or the increase is only in the base rate as a customer uses more the percentage their bill increases actually goes down until you get to the last one and that's because uh, we think the actual increase um, of a six inch meter in, in their base rate so the way we have that structured if I'm using 4,000 gallons I'm, ba I'm, I'm being billed on a basis of the base rate of your base rate would go up to 5272 and then what that additional 2,000 gallons will be charged at the same rate it's being charged that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so this is if you do the base rate only and if you did the base rate only Clemson math not NC State or ECU math Clemson math basically says if you applied it to base rate only about 85% of your customers would see residential customers would see a four dollar and fifty eight cent increase because it doesn't matter whether you go in the blue or the green the rate increase or the actual money not percent but the money is almost identical four dollars and fifty eight cents per That's month correct. <laughs> so one thing I would like to mention in the base rate is also the safest way to generate revenue because everybody pays that base rate so as you move as we move into the other options where we put more of the um, rate increase in the tiers there is the potential for water conservation or savings which could impact revenue that is generated so in option three this would be to put all of the increase increase in the tiers so the base rate would remain the same so the blue again the blue example which is the residential or commercial customer with a 5 8 meter that is in the base rate they would continue to pay the same thing as they would as they do now if you selected this option in the green you can see that again this is a customer that gets into that first tier and their overall increase would be about 7.8% and the reason for that is because the increase they have now gotten into where the increase is after that 2,000 gallons and then you can see the impacts for an inch and a half meter in a in our largest customer with a six inch meter are right around 20 percent 
option four, I mentioned that the, the last option is a combination of base and tier. Um, again, the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee came up with a, a strategy where they'd like to see a cap in the base rate and then the percentage, the rest of the percentage of the increase put into the tiers. And this is just selecting a 2% cap in the base and putting the rest um, into the tiers would be, let's see, about, it would cause about a 17.3% increase in the tier structure. But seeing the actual uh, application to the bills, you can see that again, the blue, which is that base rate customer at a 5 eighths meter, their increase would be 2%. So they would go from $48.14 to $49.11. The green, which is the 5 eighths inch meter and they're in that first tier would they would be looking at very close to what the, the increase was if you put it in the tiers only but it, about a seven and a half percent increase on their bill and then the one and a half inch meter and the six inch meter are both in excess of 15 percent actually 16 closer to 16 percent The same idea, but using a 3% cap in the base, the 5 8 inch meter in the person that stays within their base rate, their bill would go up from $48.14 to $49.59. The 5 8 meter with the 6,000 gallon um, usage in the first tier would come up to about eighty dollars and seventy one cent for their total bill after the increase for about seven point three percent so you can see that the impact between the the last three examples is is very close to um, staying the same and that's the bulk of our users and then the one and a half inch meter for a restaurant and the six inch meter are running very close but their bill would go, the restaurant's bill would go from $4,237 a month to $4,839 a month. Generally, most of your residential customers, though, in any of these uh, options, you're looking at uh, people who 6,000 gallons or less, and so you're looking at somewhere between four and a half and five and a half dollars per month. And this is the last example is a four, a four percent cap on the base rate and the rest in the tiers. And this is the um, one that the Water and Sewer Advisory Board actually recommended carrying forward um, to City Council. And I can let Mr. Thomas talk more about that if you would like. But again, the impact for a residential customer would be um, just under, I think it was a dollar sixty eight or something the increase and then the five eighths meter in the first tier is again seventy five dollars and twenty three cent and their bill would go up um, just over five dollars which is a again a seven percent increase and then you can see that the one and a half inch meter at the restaurant We'll be looking about a 12.2 percent increase. Our largest customer will be looking just under a 12 percent increase. And also, just to, to make the point one more time, 32 to 33 percent of your customers, if you went with the recommendation of the Water and Sewer Advisory Board, 32 to 33 percent of your customers would see an increase from 48.14 to 50.07, less than two dollars a month. On the other 50, if my memory was correct, it was That's like 53 percent are in the 50 or in the green category, and that group is going to see a five and uh, you know five dollar and 37 cent increase per month. And of course, that will vary because that's assuming that you that you actually consumed all the way up to six thousand gallons. Yeah, essentially, what 
you know, what I think the advisory committee took into consideration was the fact that we had not adjusted the base since about 2007, I think it was the base, last time the base. In 2010 was all done on the tiers. They looked at the different, the same thing we looked at here, <coughs> and they found the least variation from the different percentages increase. I mean, you see that first one, the bottom, mm -hmm. the other people getting hit with 20%, you know, the 24th out of the bait, the hospital, you know, it's going up $5,000. The restaurants, you know, they were going up $18,000. So they felt this was the, I guess, the fairest, since these percentages were as close to not have the extremes that you had on those other options of uh, holding the base, going all tier, or going, you know, and again, cognizant of the fact that you can't get away from the base. You know, if you're, <clears throat> you know, it, it, you know, they don't think so, but I, I think it's possible too that, you know, somebody up at uh, Olive Garden headquarters is going to see that forty two hundred dollar bill go to forty seven hundred dollar, and they say, well. I just got a flyer on this new washing machine, this dishwasher that says it's going to save me, you know, 30 percent on my water. So we've got to be careful that we don't incentivize conservation too much, or we will shoot ourselves in the foot. <laughs> the revenue. <laughs> I mean, it's just facts. Kind of like, uh, you know, the Dairy Queen and Michelangelo's pushing well, Atkins. You know, we, uh, well, we're not going to do that. And it's a great analogy because I just went through that in Wilmington and, and we had to institute stuff. You know, we had, we had people changing the tubs out, you know, every 30, 40 minutes, the, the wash tubs, when they didn't need to do that because you can pre-rinse. And so we had to, because our bill was outrageous. And so we instituted some policy that, that I know we cut it down probably 30, 38%. So it's exactly what he's, you know, just something to, yeah, because it's it expensive. Happen. It's an expense that you can control or you can try to right. control uh, internally. Generally, you know, what you're looking at uh, for residential customers uh, and for a lot of your commercial customers, you know, they're in the 5 eighths category. Now, if you're in the 3 quarter category or above, those rates change. But I think the staff did an excellent job. Uh, providing the information to the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee. Uh, that's a committee that uh, has bitten some tough bullets over the years. What we would say to you, though, is that keeping the facility fees up to date is a nice idea. It's not an idea, though, that, that is going to generate guaranteed revenue. And so to address the issues, and we think once you address this, you're going to fix the rate for a number of years again. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's not a great year. Every Everything we're touching this year, we're talking about change. But in this particular case, it's a fair statement to say that, uh, you know, about 85% of your customers, residential customers, who are at the 5 8 inch meter, which is the bulk of your folks, are going to see a, a rate increase if you go with this 4C option of somewhere between a $2 increase and a five and a half dollar increase a month, depending on their usage. D does this also in to include uh, facility increases? Are you doing that also? If that's something that the council would like, we can it's certainly so include negative. that in the fee schedule. Yeah. It's, it's negligible now. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not really worried about now, but I'm saying if, if the facility fees need to be raised, now would be a good time to do so. I agree with you. It's not going to produce a lot of revenue, but right. you should keep it up to date. You need to keep it up to date. So and you don't all. So you don't. Two years from now, have to hit them up with a big increase. If we can, if if it's justifiable, I'd say we ought to do so. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> so let's take a let's take a little bit of a break here, and stretch our legs, and uh, come back to it. Uh, Thank you. Wow. Could you go back to <laughs> did, Do you want to see the Yeah. Here. This will be I have easier to look at. Here. You got one in color that's easier to see. There's all the